Hi, today we're going to talk about asymptotes. In this class, there are two basic types. Vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So, when do we have a vertical asymptote? Well, we have one when the limit as x goes to a of f of x equals plus or minus infinity. When the limit as x goes to a from the right of f of x equals plus or minus infinity. And when the limit as x goes to a from the left of f of x equals plus or minus infinity. The vertical line x equals a is the asymptote. Myth! Functions cannot touch vertical asymptotes. This is not true. The fact is that some functions can touch vertical asymptotes. Now, you may be wondering, how does this happen? Well, let me show you a picture. So here we have our, our uh, plane, and we have our line A. So if we're going to have a vertical asymptote, we better have a limit that goes to plus or minus infinity. And so I'm going to draw a curve that's going to go to minus infinity from the left as x goes to A. So here we go. So maybe I should draw the asymptote first. And here we go. So here's the, this is the asymptote. It's the line x equals a, x equals a, and now I'm going to draw a function that goes to a negative infinity as x goes to a. So here's our function, it's going to negative infinity as x goes to a. So how could this possibly cross? Because if it crosses, uh, then we're going to fail the vertical line test somehow. Well, the way it happens is the function is defined piecewise. So we could have another piece here. And so now, um, the left and right hand limits are not the same, but nevertheless, the function touches the vertical asymptote. Let's see an example of this. Find the vertical asymptotes of f of x equals x squared minus 9x plus 14 all over x squared minus 5x plus 6. So the first thing we need to do is we, we sort of need to find out where the roots are uh, and the denominator so that we can see where the denominator is zero. And maybe the best way to do this is to factor. And so if we factor f of x, we're going to get x minus 2 times x minus 7 all over x minus 2 times x minus 3. Now this should be, there's an indication to us that something's going on here. So let's go ahead and look. So there's a, uh, there's a zero in the denominator when x equals 2. So we're going to take the limit uh, when x goes to, do, to 2 of f of x. And so let's see what happens. We take this limit. We, ha we have the limit as x goes to 2 of x minus 2 times x minus 7 all over x minus 2 times x minus 3. And because we're taking the limit, we're assuming that x is not equal to 2. So we can go ahead and we can cancel these terms and they're gone and now we have this this is equal to the limit as x goes to 2 of x minus 7 over x minus 3 and we see plugging into we see this is minus 5 over my, negative 1 which is equal to 5 so this is not we do not have a uh, vertical asymptote at uh, 5 however we also have this minus x minus 3 in the denominator. So we should look at that limit as well. So we should look at the limit as x goes to 3 of x minus 2 times x minus 7 all over x minus 2 times x minus 3. And when we take this limit, well, since we're assuming that um, we, can, we can cancel this because we're assuming that x is near uh, 3, far away from 2, and we, we get this right here. And now we have the limit. We can plug in 3 for the x minus 7. We have the limit of negative 4 over x minus 3 as x approaches 3. Now we have to decide what we're going to do. We have to figure out what we're going to do with this and well let's see. Um, first we should look at the limit as x goes to 3 from the right. Well when x goes to 3 from the right 
what's happening is, well, the numerator is negative and the denominator is positive. And x is getting closer and closer to 3. So this, this denominator is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, yet the fraction is remaining negative. So this whole thing is equal to negative infinity. Now, if we look at the limit as x goes to 3 from the left, well, let's see, the numerator is negative, and the denominator is, well, it's going to be something slightly less than 3 minus 3, so the denominator is also uh, negative, so, and it's getting closer and closer to 0 in the denominator, so this thing's going to be equal to infinity here, and I think it's worthwhile to see a plot of this. So here we see it. So here is our, our initial limit that we computed. We can see that as x goes to 2, there's a hole in the curve. And as we approach 3 from the left, we see that the curve approaches infinity. And that as we approach 3 from the right, we see the function approaches negative infinity. And here is our vertical asymptote. Now let's talk about horizontal asymptotes. So when do we have a horizontal asymptote? Well, the first time is when the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x equals some number, say l. And the next time is when the limit as x goes to negative infinity of f of x equals some number l. In this case, y equals l is a horizontal asymptote. Now, there's some. There's some common misunderstanding with horizontal asymptotes, and let's go ahead and talk about that. So there's a myth, myth. Functions cannot touch horizontal asymptotes. Well, this just isn't true. The fact is that functions can touch horizontal asymptotes. That's no problem. And to really, uh, to really uh, get this point across, let's go ahead and look at a graph, okay? So here is, here's the graph of a function. And it looks like as the limit as x goes to infinity, infinity is maybe this point L. And the line y equals L is the horizontal asymptote. And as you can see, the function crosses the horizontal asymptote an infinite number of times, or at least many, many number of times. OK, so now let's do an example. Find the horizontal asymptotes of f of x equals x plus 1 all over the square root of x squared. And maybe, maybe your spider senses are activated at this point because, uh, as we can see, the square root of, we should see that something interesting is going on here. So first, we need to compute the limit as x goes to infinity of x plus 1 all over the square root of x squared. And next, we're going to compute the limit uh, as x goes to negative infinity of x plus 1 all over the square root of x squared. So the limit as x goes to infinity of x plus 1 all over square root of x squared, well, let's see. Th what we do here is we multiply by 1 over x all over 1 over x. And when we do this, well, uh, these become 1 because we're, <laughs> we're going to infinity. x is not equal to 0. And 1 times 1 over x is 1 over x. And then the 1 over x, when it goes inside of the square root sign, it becomes a 1 over x squared. And so that's, that's what we have right here. And as we take the limit, we see this is equal to 1 because this term is equal to 1, this is equal to 1, and this goes to 0 as x goes to infinity. So this is equal to 1. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. Now we need to look at the limit as x goes to negative infinity of x plus 1 all over the square root of x squared. And here's where things get a little bit hairy. Um, what's going to happen is since we're going to negative infinity, well, x is a negative number. And we should be multiplying by a positive number over a positive number. And so we have minus 1 over x. So this is a positive number, and this is a positive number. And when we then uh, distribute, we're going to get well, this is uh, it's x times minus 1 over x. So that's going to be minus 1 minus 1 over x. And when we put this into the square root, remember, this is a positive number. This is a positive number going inside the square root. 
uh, but then we're squaring it so it's even, it's still positive. We still get x squared over x squared. And so as we take the limit, this term goes to zero, this factor or quotient goes to one, and we're left with a negative one. So y equals negative one is also a horizontal asymptote. And I think the way to really see what's going on here is to look at a graph. And so here we have, this is f of x, and here's our horizontal asymptote at y equals one, and here is our horizontal asymptote at y equals negative one. And look at this, we can see the curve crossing this horizontal asymptote. So again, we have another example of where it is perfectly legal for the curve to cross the horizontal asymptote. So we've just discussed two types of asymptotes, vertical and horizontal. The first is when f of x goes to infinity. The second is when x goes to infinity. They're a little bit different. You got to keep your brain turned on to do this stuff. Let's go do some more math. 